said, I'm pregnant. And they're both married. What they found out is that this man is actually the boss of the mistress's husband. The mistress's husband is an employee of the man. So the man knows the whereabouts of this husband all the time. So what happened is the man arranged for the murder of the mistress's husband. The husband was killed. The man married the mistress and this murder went unsolved for nine whole months. It went unsolved for nine months. And the crazy thing is you know this person. You know the man. The man is King David. King David. He is the author of this psalm that we're reading today. He's also the author of the psalm from the last two Sundays and for next week's psalm. God said that King David had a heart just like God's heart. Yet David cheated and murdered. David was a mob. He was a man of God, a follower of God. Yet he was a huge sinner, big time sinner. And we can like look at him and be like, oh, that's pretty bad. That's a really big news headline. But the truth is, we are guilty of that same sin. Because Jesus says, if someone looks at someone else with lust, it's the same as if you committed adultery. You're committing adultery in your thoughts. Jesus says, if you have hateful thoughts towards someone, that is like murdering them with your thoughts. And we have all lusted before and hated someone before. I don't know your hearts, but I'm pretty sure you've all done those two things before. We are guilty of these same sins, just like David. Every human, every person is guilty of sin. Everyone. What it comes down to is for Christians, we are forgiven of our sin. As Christians, we are forgiven of our sin through Jesus' death on the cross. And that is the greatest gift of all. Am I right? Amen? That's the greatest gift of all. And that should bring us great joy. But as a Christian myself and all of us that are Christians, it's kind of hard to remember this joy every day. It's kind of hard to live with this joy of being forgiven every day because we take for granted that God's going to forgive us of our sin. We sin and we know God will forgive us. It's just like how it works. We become kind of complacent and we kind of expect it. The title of my message today is How to Get Your Joy Back. How to Get Your Joy Back. And in Psalm 51, 12, David says to God, he asks God and prays, God, restore to me the joy of my salvation. Restore to me the joy of my salvation. Is that a prayer that you need to pray today? If you are a Christian, do you have joy? If not, when did you lose it? Why aren't you joyful today? Today in this psalm, we'll see how we can have joy for being forgiven of our sins every single day. And we'll see three steps for how you can get your joy back. So we'll actually be in Psalm 32 today. Psalm 32. And before we look at Psalm 32, I'm going to share a little bit more of the backstory of the news headline I mentioned. It's from 2 Samuel chapters 11 and 12. And the details of that is... David was the king of Israel. He had a palace. And just like I said, he was in his palace, on the roof actually, looking out of his kingdom. And he saw a woman bathing in a nearby house. And he's like, I want her for myself. So he gets his servants, and they go get Bathsheba, was her name, and they bring Bathsheba over to his house, to the palace. And they have sex. And she's like, I'm pregnant. Turns out that Bathsheba's husband is one of David's soldiers in David's army. 
So what David does is he, Bathsheba's husband Uriah is out in the battlefield. So David makes an order for Uriah to be sent back home to have a break and to rest and hang out with his wife. Have some time with your wife to try to hide his sin. But Uriah was so committed and loyal to his fellow soldiers, he didn't want to have any special privileges if they couldn't have it too. So what Uriah did, Bathsheba's husband Uriah, he slept on the palace steps. He would not go to his house to have sex with his wife. He slept in the palace steps. So David's like, okay, he's not going to do that. I'm trying to cover this sin. So what David did is he brought Uriah into the palace to party and he got Uriah drunk. Maybe he'll go home and have sex with his wife. Now my sin will be hidden. But no, Uriah's too loyal to the bros and he sleeps on the palace steps again and says, I'm not going to go home because I want to I want to be fighting for my country. So what King David does is he writes an order and the order is for the captain of the military squad. And he actually has Uriah carry the order himself. It's his death wish, bringing it to the captain of his squad. The order says, put Uriah, Bathsheba's husband, on the front lines of battle, the most dangerous place with him and his squad. Bring him to the most dangerous place in the battle and then have the squad pull back. So Uriah is exposed. And that's what happened. And Uriah died. So, King David marries Bathsheba. And then they have a son. But what happens is God sends a prophet named Nathan to David's doorstep. And then David welcomes in the prophet Nathan. If you've seen Veggie Tales, you might remember this final graph. So, Nathan shares a parable or a story about how there's a rich man and a poor man. The rich man has tons of cattle, tons of sheep, abundance, plentiful cattle. And there's a poor man who has one lamb. And then the rich man has guests over to his house and he says, I don't want to use one of my own cattle. I'm going to use the poor man's lamb. So the rich man takes the poor man's lamb to have a feast for his dinner guests. When David heard this story from the prophet Nathan, David's like, that man deserves to die. He doesn't deserve to live. That was horrible. David was appalled. Then Nathan says, that man is you. That man is you, David. And David was convicted of his sin. Psalm 51 is written right after this when David is lamenting about his sin. He's like, God, I've messed up. Please forgive me. That's Psalm 51. Today we're focusing on Psalm 32. Psalm 32 is within the year. So later that year, and David looks back at all that happened in that situation. And he reflects and examines how he confessed and repented of his sin and how God forgave him. So as we look at Psalm 32, we can see the joy of the forgiveness of sins that David had and how we can have that same joy today. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation of the Bible. Let's check it out. Psalm 32, it says, Oh, what joy for those whose disobedience is forgiven, whose sin is put out of sight. Yes, what joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared of guilt, whose lives are lived in complete honesty. When I refused to confess my sin, my body wasted away, and I groaned all day long. Day and night, your hand of discipline was heavy on me. My strength evaporated like water in the summer heat. Finally, I confessed all my sins to you and stopped trying to hide my guilt. I said to myself, I will confess my rebellion to the Lord, and you forgave me. All my guilt is gone. Therefore, let all the godly pray to you while there is still time, that they may not drown in the floodwaters of judgment. For you are my hiding place. You protect me from trouble. You surround me with songs of victory. The Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. Do not be like a senseless horse or mule that needs a bit and bridle to keep it under control. 
Many sorrows come to the wicked, but unfailing love surrounds those who trust the Lord. So rejoice in the Lord and be glad, all you who obey him. Shout for joy, all you whose hearts are pure. So how can you get your joy back? How can you be joyful again? How can you receive this joy of your salvation? 